in the last lesson, we made a simple calculator, but all our simple calculator can do is add two numbers together. In this lesson, we're going to make it capable of subtraction, multiplication, and division. Now, before we go too far, we forgot to save our program in the last lesson, didn't we? And that can be a problem, especially if the power goes out or someone comes along and spills coffee on your keyboard, as has happened to me on a couple of occasions. Well, okay, I spill coffee on my keyboard on a couple of occasions. The one time the computer actually went up in smoke. But we'll talk about that later. Let's go ahead and save our program by clicking on the Save button. And here we are. Notice we're still in our VB files folder. Let's save the form. I'm going to call this Simple Calculator. And I'll hit Save. We can also save the project as Simple Calculator. Simple Calculator. But don't save it as Simple Calculator.frm. That's bad. All right, make sure you just click and save here, and it will save it as a VBP file, a Visual Basic Project file. It's okay to have the form and the project name the same thing, especially if you only have one form in your project, like these simple programs that we're writing today. Now, so far, our calculator only does addition. We have calculate here, but calculate only does addition. So let's change this button, first of all, so the caption says add. And then we'll make some more buttons that do subtract, multiply, and divide. So let's click on this button and get to its properties. And we can leave the name alone. Calculate button is fine. We don't have to worry about changing it to some button, although we should. But let's change caption down here to add. And now this button says add. And in fact, let's make it a little bit smaller. There we go. Now let's add another button over here to subtract. I'll just copy and paste this button. Copy and paste. Do you want to create a control array? I'll say no. And here's our other button. I'm going to slide it down here. Let's change this one's name to subtract button. And I'll put the caption subtract on it. Now, let's see its code. Double click on the subtract button. Here we are inside of our code window again. I'm going to enter, enter. This time it's going to be very simply answer equals the value of the first number minus the value of the second number. Could I have copied and pasted that and just changed the operations? Certainly. But I wanted to type it in again so you can see exactly how it looks. Let's go ahead and try it. Let's run our program. Type in 5 and 7. Add. I get 12. Subtract. I get negative 2. Perfect. Our add and subtract buttons are working perfectly. Let's add two more real quick. Let's add multiply and divide. I'll close the program. I'm going to close the code window for now. That'll put us back here. Now let's copy and paste two more buttons. Copy, paste, control array no, and then paste again, control array no. Let's move these over here. I'll teach you how to better deal with control arrays in a future class. Now let's change the properties of these buttons now. This one's name is going to be multiply button. And its caption will be multiply. We'll click on the next button. And this one will be divide button with a caption of divide. Now let's double click on these buttons to adjust their code. I've double clicked on the multiply button and now notice I'm between the other two buttons. That's because Visual Basic arranges the private subnames alphabetically. Notice I've got calculate button, then multiply button, then subtract button. But the code for these is going to be real easy. All I'll do is I'll highlight this one, I'll copy it, 
I'm going to use my keyboard this time. Control C on the keyboard is copy. And I'll click down here and then I'll paste it. Paste is Control V as in Victor. Those are my keyboard shortcut tricks. I use these keyboard shortcuts all the time. Control C is copy. Control X for cut. Control V for paste. And Control S for save. Become familiar with these keyboard shortcuts. So anyhow, I pasted this line of text in here, and now we'll change this to multiplication, which is the asterisk. It's usually over the 8 key on the keyboard, Shift 8. That's the asterisk for multiply. Now, if you can see both windows, both your form and your code window on the screen, all you have to do to flip between them is to simply click on the form window. Now, double-click on divide here. And that will put you in a new private sub back in the code window for divide. And now watch this. All I have to do is hit paste, right? Control V. Because that code that we copied earlier was still in the Windows clipboard. And if you need to know more about the Windows clipboard, again, get your hands on our Windows basics and our Microsoft Word basics. I spend a lot of time covering cut, copy, and paste and the clipboard in those classes. Division is a forward slash. Val of first number divided by Val of the second number. All right, let's go ahead and save our program and run it. And I'll type in some numbers like uh, 50 and 10. Let's add them. There's 60. Subtract them. There's 40. Multiply. There's 500 and divide, there's 5. Beautiful. Let's try some other stuff. Let's change this from 10. How about 0? Add, you know, subtract, multiply, divide. Oh, oop, there's an error. Now, this is not a compile error. This is not a syntax error in our code. Our code is fine. What we have here is a runtime error. There's two kinds of errors you're going to get. Syntax errors are generally compile time errors. In other words, when the program gets put together before it actually runs, the Visual Basic program looks at it and says, hey, this isn't right. I can't run your program. Something's wrong here. Those are the easy ones to find. Then you've got your runtime errors. Runtime errors are the nasty ones. These are errors in the logic of your code. They don't usually show up until you start running your program. And sometimes they're buried deep, so they don't even show up right away. We've released software commercially that has had runtime errors in it. Even Microsoft has released software that has had runtime errors in it. But this is an easy one to fix. It says division by zero. Basically, you violated one of math's rules. You can't divide by zero. So what can we do? Well, we can either end the program or we can debug the program. Now, we're going to spend a lot of time in one of the future classes going over debugging. It's a whole class in and of itself. But let's go ahead and click on the debug button, and I'll show you what it looks like. Here we are. Essentially, it brings us into the code that generated the error. And if you hold your mouse pointer over any of these, you can see what the value of these different variables are. Answer is 0. First number is 50. Second number is 0. And that should be enough right there to tell you that, yeah, we got a problem. Now, what we're going to do at this point is we're going to stop our program. Our program is technically still running. Here's the Start button. Well, notice there's over here there's an End button. Click on the End button, and that will stop the program. Now, there's two ways we can fix this error. The first way is to simply have Visual Basic ignore any errors and continue moving. That's what I like to call the easy, cheesy way out of it. And here's the easy, cheesy way. Come up in front of this line of codes. I'm going to click up here. Press Enter to give me a blank line and then tab in. And I'm going to type in on space error space resume space next. On error, resume next. What does that do? Basically, it says if you encounter an error while running the subroutine, ignore it and move on to the next line. Now, in this case, there is no next line, but it'll basically not generate an error. Let's see how that works. Let's run the program. I'll type in 2 and 0 and hit divide. 
and nothing happens. Like I said, it was easy, but it's cheesy. There's nothing telling the user, hey, you can't divide by zero. So it would be nice if we could generate our own little error message. Let's stop the program. Now, there are a couple of ways to do this. I don't want to get too deeply into error checking and error handling in today's class. But let's get rid of this on error resume next. Delete goodbye. And let's put in a couple of extra blank lines. Now, what I'd like to do is I'd like to handle this error myself. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to look at the denominator, the second number, and we're going to see if it's equal to zero before we try dividing it. If it's zero, we'll pop up a message box that says, hey, you can't divide by zero. If it's not zero, we'll let it do the math. Now, in order for this to work, we have to make Visual Basic smart. We have to make Visual Basic be able to look at the value and make a decision either way as far as what to do. Hey, if this is zero, pop up the error message and get out of the subroutine. Okay? How do we do it? Well, we're going to use a new function called if. We're going to use an if-then statement. And here's how it works. Let's tab over. I'm going to type in if the value of second number equals zero, then enter, tab in, Let's display a message box. Message box, quote, you can't divide by zero. Enter, exit, sub. Enter, backspace, and if. What is all this? Let's take a look at it line by line. If means we're going to check a value. If the value of the second number is equal to zero, then do some stuff. We're going to do all the stuff between the if statement and the end if statement. You can put any number of lines that you want in here. All right, what's the stuff? Well, message box, we know, right? Message box, you can't divide by zero. That's easy. Exit sub means get out of dodge. That means exit this sub, you're done. Don't continue on down here. Okay? So it's going to come in here. It's going to check the number. If it's equal to zero, what's going to happen? It's going to pop the message and exit the subroutine. Otherwise, it's going to continue running. It'll come down here and do the math. Let's save our program. I like to save my work often. And let's run it and see what we get. All right, here we go. Five and zero. Divide. Oh, you can't divide by zero. Look at that. Isn't that nice? And then we'll hit OK. Let's try something with an actual value in here. Let's put a two in there. Divide. And we get 2.5. Let's go ahead and close our program. And so now you know how to make your Visual Basic program smart with an if statement. If something, right, if the value of the second number is zero, then do this stuff.